Hey everybody, Judge Evans here. Well, today's March 7th, 2019, and I spent some time today creating sample time sharing plans so that if you are in a situation where you want to look at ideas for time sharing, maybe it's something that could be ordered, has been ordered, uh, I don't specify in my examples, you can go to www.ca.cjis20.org click on Charlotte County, click on Circuit Judges, click on my face, and then it's either right on that page or in the downloads, you'll see this new timesharing information. So if you're writing a paper, for example, or you need ideas on, on timesharing plans, you can go right there and say, gee, I'm not sure what I want to talk about in my, in my paper. Maybe you're one of my students or you're another uh, family law student or legal studies student in another class. This will give you some, some ideas. And speaking of time sharing plans, when we were in class, we did not get to talk about how do you modify a time sharing plan once a final judgment has been entered. Well, if one party says, gee, this, this week on week off thing or whatever time sharing plan it is, is not working for the children and I want to change it, but my spouse doesn't. How do I ask the court for help? they would file a supplemental petition to modify. And in that supplemental petition, they have to plead and later prove, but they must first plead that there has been a substantial, material, unforeseen, and permanent change in circumstances. Well, what does that mean? Substantial and material. Well, it means it's something, it's a big deal. It could be something like uh, the children's school behavior has deteriorated since the entry of this time-sharing plan, or their grades have gone downhill, or somebody got Baker Acted. Maybe one of the kids got Baker Acted. That's pretty substantial and material. And it has to be unforeseen. So the last order that got entered could be the final judgment, or it could be a supplemental final judgment. Maybe this isn't the first time that a time-sharing plan has been modified in the child's minority. And you say, since the last order got entered, X has happened. And it has to have been for unforeseen. Unforeseen. So, for example, oh, well, my child is now 13, and he wants to have a say in where he spends his overnights. Well, that a child has grown up, that's not unforeseen. You knew that was going to happen. God willing, of course. You knew the children were going to age. And we all know there's no age in Florida, right? for when they get to say, hey, this is what I want to do. Okay, so substantial, material, unforeseen, and permanent. Well, what about permanent? Well, gee, this week on week off isn't going to work because my former spouse is in the police academy. Well, that's not permanent. That's five or six months long, and then you can go back to what you were doing. Okay, substantial, material, unforeseen, permanent. Now, once you have pled details that meet those criteria and you get into court, now you have to prove that what you want done is in the children's best interest. Okay, so that's time sharing in a really, really quick overview. That, excuse me, modifications to time sharing in a really quick overview. So you never know, maybe next class, uh, next time we have a class in the semester that is, we'll get to talk about it. But this last time we didn't get to talk about it, so there it is. Have a great day. See you soon.